guys, it's Amber. So today's video is going to be all about hair extensions. So I know my past videos have been really popular when I've talked about different kinds of clipping extensions and trying out hair extensions from Wish. So I thought I would do something a little different today and try some tape and hair extensions. So I've had some tape and hair extensions in my hair before to give it some thickness, but I've never had a full head done and I'm really, really excited. I have been growing my hair out so it would be long enough to blend with extensions. I had it short in the back and it just wasn't going to blend right. So now it's finally to the length where I feel like I can add that thickness and the length I've been looking for. So I have actually been looking a little bit at different hair extension companies for a while and I've actually had a ton of different offers from other companies. Because my hair extension videos have been very popular, I'll get someone reaching out to me say, hey, they want me to try on their clip-ins or this or that. And so I've kind of got a system down for what I look for in a company when it comes to hair extensions. So I'm going to share some of those things and experiences with you. I'm also going to show you the hair that I got, kind of give you my first impressions. Then I am going to have them installed and I'll come back and I will show you the final results and I'll give you an update after I've worn them for a little bit. Okay, so first off, I will show you the hair that I'm putting in my hair. So this is from Six Star. These are luxury hair extensions. These are taped. They are 50 grams per pack and I got two of this lighter blonde and then one of a mixed. They call this the piano blend because it has some of the dark, which is closer to my natural, and then some of the light platinum. It makes a really nice blend. Okay, so here is how the hair comes packaged. So on these ones, you can see the piano color. It's got the two different shades and they run throughout. And you can see how thick the hair is from root to tip. It doesn't have like really thin straggly ends that come down. And the way that tape and hair extensions work is it's basically like double stick tape. You've got one end and one end. You put a little slice of your hair in between, you stick them together, and that's how they work. So they're pretty easy to apply. I'm gonna go over some of that. I'm not gonna do an actual demo, but I'm just gonna give kind of a brief description and some tips and tricks. There are a million, a million, million, million installation videos on YouTube. So if you need a more in-depth tutorial on how to install them, I'm sure you can find one. So the second color that I got is, and I will put the links down below for everything. I am so excited for this. You guys do not know how many, how much I've been looking for hair extensions that have multicolor and rooted balayage options. Cause I mean, I have roots and I like to keep my hair with some of my natural in it. I will probably touch it up and color it before I get them put in, but I like to keep the top a little bit blonder, but throughout the bottom sections of my hair, I do have that rooted look. And I really like that this, look how good this matches. I mean, amazing blend like holy cow and since it has this dark root when my hair is tucked or whatever you're not going to see like a bright platinum piece right there in my hair where it is finer it's just going to blend seamlessly into my hair which i'm so excited about so my first impressions of this hair is one it's super super soft this is a Remy hair extension. There is a lot of different qualities when it comes to hair. I've used some that are really expensive. Like I'm talking like I can only afford one pack because it's over like $100 for a pack. And I've used some that were cheap. These hair extensions are supposed to be tangle free, which is super nice. That is really important that all of the cuticles are facing the same direction in this type of hair extension so that your hair isn't gonna get tangled and matted. When you get really cheap hair extensions, sometimes they just put them in every which way. Some of the cuticles are going up, some of them are going down, and then it makes it so they tangle really easily. So these ones are the tangle free kind. Of course hair can get tangled, but just use common sense when they're in your hair, comb your hair very gently, don't comb them when they're wet. And then I usually like to put it in like a loose braid when I sleep to just make sure that they don't get tangled when I'm sleeping. But on the back, it basically has some do's and don'ts talking about how much hair to put in, you know, how to take care of them, how often you should move them up, stuff like that. So they include all of that. But what I wanted to go over first was just some tips and tricks on how to apply them, but also what to look for when you're choosing a company so you don't get scammed. Because trust me, I know that the world of extensions is super overwhelming because you're seeing these huge, crazy, expensive extensions and then ones for like $25 on Amazon and you're like, what is the difference? So I'm here for you. Don't worry. I will give you the tips so you do not get scammed. So first of all is 
these hair extensions, in my opinion, are more affordable for the quality of hair than other competitive brands. So for this package of 50 grams of hair is about $67. These are 20 inch. A lot of times you're gonna pay that much for like 14 inch, so to get that much hair and weight for that price is honestly really good. I'm gonna do some price comparisons um, in a little bit, but right there I think that this is a good like middle range price, especially when you're comparing the quality because most hair extensions are much more expensive. That being said, when I say that these are affordable, just know that I know that this isn't affordable for everyone. Hair extensions are an investment. If you're not willing to invest into good quality hair, then you probably should just buy some really cheap Amazon clip-ons or a wig to try or something like that because this is something that you're gonna wanna take care of, you're gonna want to make sure it's installed properly, and you know, you're not gonna go buy a fancy car and not get car insurance, right? Like that would be kind of dumb. You're, not, you're gonna register it and take care of it, well, it's the same thing. You're not gonna invest money into hair extensions and then just be like, oh, I don't care what happens to them. I'm gonna comb them when they're wet. I'm gonna do the things I'm not supposed to do. If you're gonna go through the effort, it's worth it to make sure you're getting a good quality product and that you're taking care of it the right way. When I get emailed from a brand, especially from hair extensions companies, a lot of them are from different countries. So there is often a language barrier there that is just something that is pretty normal, pretty typical. But with lower quality sites, I notice a lot more spelling errors. I notice that some of the stuff that they write might not make sense. But what I really look for is just how their website is laid out, how easy it is to use, and also the quality of the pictures. So I can't tell you how many extension companies have reached out to me and I go to click on their pictures and I don't even care what the price is because they have celebrities. And I'm like, um, I'm pretty sure Beyonce does not wear your hair extensions. I'm pretty sure you stole that photo without permission. And actually the hair extensions you're showing don't even look like her hair. So I'm not sure how that works. So I always make sure that the pictures look legitimate because if they have just some random picture of a celebrity to show their hair extension and they don't have any other pictures of their hair extensions, or the ones they have just look really low quality, it's probably gonna be a sign it's not someone you wanna work with. Also, they may have influencer pictures, which is fine. Like, like they sent me this hair, I could take a bunch of pictures and give them permission to use it on the site. But in addition to having an influencer picture of someone actually wearing the hair, they have pictures of them up close, you know, what the wefts look like, what the clips look like, what the tape looks like. So there's a lot of detail pictures that you can tell are very consistent. It doesn't look like they've hijacked it from other websites and stolen other people's content because guys, that is out there. So be careful. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. So you wanna make sure that like, it looks like they have a pattern with how they do their models and how they do their pictures. When all that makes sense, it kind of tells you that they're actually selling a legitimate product and you're not gonna get scammed. Next thing I do is I check reviews. Now I did have a review I did several years ago for some clip-ins that I did not check reviews and I actually in that video came back and said, hey, this is something I didn't know about. When I checked reviews for Six Star, everything was very positive and I was very happy with the reviews that I saw from the hair, so I felt very confident going with this company. Now, that being said, I did see one girl that didn't like her hair because she had dark blonde hair with blonde highlights, like much darker than mine. And she got the lightest, pla lighter than this. I mean like bleach blonde platinum, and she's like, oh, it doesn't match my hair, and I'm all, but another thing that I liked about this company is that they do have a 30 day guarantee. So if you did end up getting hair and you're like, oh my, that looks way different on the website, you can exchange it, which is totally awesome. I would just make sure that you keep it all covered up and sealed because I think it's pretty easy to just hold it up and look and see if it matches without opening it because you don't want to like contaminate the hair. You want to make sure that it stays sealed so it can be sent back easily because, you know, with the clear packaging, you can, you can pretty well hold it up and be like, yeah. That looks like it's part of my hair. So you also want to check and see how their customer service is. Like, are they nice to their customers? Do they interact with people on social media? You guys might not think about that stuff, but it's actually really important to see how a company actually interacts with their customers, especially if people do have issues or something. If they're really quick to respond and be like, sure, you know, we'll fix this, we'll do that. Like that to me shows a lot about a company. Also, you can see what their shipping times are. If you're shipping like these hair extensions, they shipped on Monday and today is Wednesday and they already showed up DHL to my house. 
I had a sign for them, like securely delivered to my house. So they're not sitting out where somebody can steal them. And like so quick, I was super impressed that they're shipping. Ain't nobody got time to wait six to eight weeks for the hair extensions. So I was really glad with the shipping on this. Also, you need to make sure that you're comparing like hair extensions to hair extensions, like apples, to apples, oranges, to oranges. Like you're not going to compare these hair extensions that are 20 inches long and 50 gram packs to, you know, hair extensions that are 15 inches long and 20 gram packs. You know, just make sure when you're comparing things like you might look at packs like, oh, well, this pack is only $20. Well, yeah, it only has five strands in it. I mean, like you kind of have to make sure what you're comparing to make sure you get the best price. But like compared to other quality hair, their prices are really, really good. And I have experienced a lot of different hair extensions. So there was a lot of brands that were much more expensive. Like one of them, it only sold it in packs and they were like $70 more expensive. And then, oh my gosh, there were some that I was like shocked just to get 20 pieces one package was $120 for 20 inches, $120. Okay. Like <laughs> that's so much more expensive. And let's see the other one was cause these were $67 and the most expensive ones I saw were $244 per package. So to get three packages would have been $734 and that is not even including paying for installation. Okay. So you want to make sure when you see the price, that you know, what is it for? Is it for a two pack? Is it for a three pack? How many grams is it? So it's very important to know you're like 260 something dollars. You're like, oh, that should be enough. And then you look and think, oh, that's only for 50 grams. This is 50 grams. Um, I can't do my whole head with 50 grams. I need basically three packages so I can do the front and the back. I mean, you don't want to just have party in the front and nothing in the back. It's not a good look, I promise. All right, so when you're trying to figure out the length of hair extension you want, you gotta think that this is gonna be going to the back of your head. So you don't ever put hair extensions on this last little bit of hair because when you pull your hair up, you're gonna want some coverage there, but you are gonna put it fairly close to the nape of your neck. So you gotta think like for 20 inches, like this is some um, nice mermaid locks I've got going on here. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure that you pay attention to how the length is going to be. Cause so many times I see people like hold it up here and like, Oh, that length seems good. And then we start applying them and they're like, Oh my gosh, that's so long. So like, don't waste your money on hair. That's way too long if you don't want it that long, but they do offer a ton of different lengths and a ton of different colors. So I'm sure you can find a length and a color and a style that works for you. But just saying like, make sure you think about how long the hair is going to be when it's coming down from the back of your head. Also with some hair extension companies, you have to pay more money to get longer hair because the ends are so thin. Like these ends, like sure, I'll like trim them up a little bit when it's all done and like blend them in. But like, I don't need to cut off like six inches of hair just to make them look normal. Where some really crappy hair extensions, they'll say it's 20 inches, but this is how it looks. Like you take like half of this away and then on the ends, it's just like this. They're totally thin on the ends. And I really loved how these were thick from root to tip. Makes such a difference because you're actually getting the length that you're paying for, which is really important. So make sure you're buying real human hair extensions. Yes, there is extensions out there that aren't human hair that can be used with heat tools. I know this because it is usually what they make mannequins out of for beauty school and you can curl them and they just kind of like, they don't work as well as real hair. You want to make sure that it's the real deal. And you will know that because it will be able to be cut and styled and colored and all those things. If your hair extensions can't be colored, then they're probably not real. So when I was ordering this hair, they said typically people use two to three packs of hair. If you have longer hair and you're just looking to add thickness and a little bit of length, you're going to be totally fine with just a couple of packs. For me, I wanted to add quite a bit of length. And so I'm, I was doing the three packs. But if you have thicker hair, you may need four or five packs of hair because you want to make sure that you have enough hair. If you've ever been on Instagram and looked at, is this your client page? It is full of bad hair colors and bad haircuts and bad extensions. And most of the bad extensions are one, they're showing, two, they don't match, and three, there's not enough hair. I can't tell you how many people have like a straight up bob and then like three strands coming out and they think that blends. 
No, it doesn't blend. So make sure you're getting enough hair because you want the blend to be seamless. So how can you make that blend seamless? Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, make sure your color matches very good and make sure it matches the ends of your hair. So this is going to be the part that overlays onto your extensions. And yes, this can be colored. So like I opted to go a little bit lighter because I could always go through here and add a little bit of low lights, especially where I have this other color. I'm going to just kind of mix these in. So they're gonna match this like underneath hair I've got going on right here. And it's gonna be a really beautiful blend. So unless your hair is solid, like I mean straight up root to tip platinum, I would not suggest getting the straight up platinum hair extensions unless you're planning on coloring them a little bit or getting the roots tinted a little bit just cause it's very obvious if they don't blend or match. But usually with browns and black, it's very easy to go with one solid color. But with how many options there are for different highlights and with the balayage and things like that, I would opt to choose a hair extension that has some dimension to it or do like I did and pick something with dimension and also pick a different color to mix in. You would be surprised what a difference it makes just adding a few pops of a little bit darker blonde. It totally takes your eye from root to tip and it just makes your hair look so much more natural than if you have dark streaks in your hair and then they stop and then the rest of it's just blonde. I mean, obviously balayage and blonde tips are a thing. You wanna make sure that line is, is super blended. Another thing is, is the thicker your hair is, the harder it is to hide your hair extensions. So when there's a really thick blunt line, it's really super obvious that you have hair extensions. So what you can do is one, make sure you soften up the ends of your hair, go get a haircut, tell them you're gonna have hair extensions put in, have them you know, take the bottom and lighten it up, thin it out with thinning shears so that it's, it's a much softer blend. So with my hair, like I'm in need of a haircut, but even then I would probably just point cut it and not take it a sharp edge because then it would show that line in my hair extensions. Also having layers in your hair will really help it blend as well. You can layer the hair extensions in your hair and then it'll just kind of go from short to long and it will just hide the hair extensions so much better because the goal is for no one to know you're wearing hair extensions, right? So it looks natural, people don't know. So I would say that if you feel like you're right in between two colors to order like a pack of each and then just mix them in. And I think it can create a really beautiful effect in your hair. I will be honest, I don't think hair extensions are for everyone. If you got a bop and you regret it, you can get some hair extensions and to fill it out to your shoulders and kind of like fill it in. But please, for the love of all that is good and holy, do not go from a bob to 20 inch hair extensions because girl, you are not fooling anyone. No one believes that this is real. <laughs> you don't wanna look like you have a mullet, okay? You don't wanna have this like short, short hair here and then suddenly super long hair. It doesn't look natural. So just make sure if you want extensions that blend with your hair that you go a little bit shorter, get some layers of it. They can look beautiful and amazing. You don't have to go 20 inches. The shorter your hair is, the shorter your hair extension should be. The longer your hair is, the more you can get away with the longer hair extensions. Of course, this is solely in my opinion, so take it for what it's worth. So now you might be asking yourself, so why would I buy hair extensions online? So here's the reason. You can save some money. So if I as a stylist was going to buy these hair extensions, I would probably mark the hair up to cover the cost of my shipping, to cover the time that I spent picking them out, to help cover some of my insulation, and to make money, because it would be my job. And so I would probably end up charging more for the hair than it would actually cost. And that is pretty typical because a stylist wants to cover their time and effort in picking out the hair. So most places will let you bring in your own hair. So you can just find a stylist who'd be willing to work with you and you could bring your hair in and then you can pay to have it installed. Now, when I got a quote to have it installed, a girl that I knew that I was friends with, she used to live in my neighborhood. It wasn't like a family friend deal or anything. We're not that close. She said she would be, and she would install them for $50 an hour, which in Utah I think is a very reasonable rate. But I would say that, you know, you could probably see upwards of 100 plus depending on where you live. And of course, the more high end your area is like California, New York, those prices are gonna go up. But typically installation for this can be anywhere as quick as 45 minutes for something with just thickness, up to an hour and a half to two hours at probably the most. It's not like a six hour ordeal like it used to be when we had like the little micro links and everything like that. It's much, much quicker. So therefore you're saving a ton of money on the installation as well. That being said, can you install these on your own? 
Now, I know there's gonna be hairstylists in the comments that are gonna come for me saying like, don't ever recommend blah, 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 blah. And there's so many videos out there that are like, don't put these in at home, don't put these in at home. Yeah, you can, okay? If you color your hair at home, cut your hair at home, people will be doing all kinds of crap to their hair at home. <laughs> yes, you can install these at home. Would I recommend that you do it alone? No. Would I recommend you watch a ton of tutorials that show how to do it? Yes. But can it be done? Yeah, I'm sure it can be done. So what I would suggest is if you really, really want to do it at home, ask yourself, how good at hair am I really? Like, be really real with yourself and be like, Am I a person that other people ask for help with their hair? Do people ask for advice with their hair? Do I have good skills with parting the hair? Can I curl the back of my hair easily? Is that something I struggle with? Like just think about how your actual ability in the hair department is before you decide to try to do this on your own. And if you feel like you're lacking and you want to do it yourself and you don't want to pay a hairstylist, try to find a friend who is that person. We all have a person in our lives that maybe never went to beauty school, but probably would have been a bomb hairstylist if they would have, and has an ability to figure it out and could watch a tutorial and help you with it. I'm just keeping it 100%. It can be done. Would I recommend it for best results? Probably not. Is it possible? Of course it's possible. I see lots of tutorials where people put these on themselves. It's obviously possible. Your basic guidelines for applying these is you want to make sure that you're not going too close to any of your hairlines. So like right around your face, at the nape of your neck, and like obviously on the crown and top of your head where any calyx would be, you're not going to apply any of the hair extensions there. You're going to be applying them back away from your ears a little bit and in the back and sides of your hair. So when you're applying them in the back, basically every video you're going to watch is going to show you to kind of go along a little bit of the shape of your head. You kind of want, you don't want to go in a complete straight line because your head is not a rectangle, it is round. So it, when you kind of go straight in the back and then as, it, as your head starts to curve, kind of angle them a little bit, it helps them lay really nice. Also like on the sides of your hair, think about where you wear your hair. Like do you wear it down all the time? Do you wear it up? Because if you wear your hair up a lot, if you kind of angle them up like this along your hairline here, it makes it easier for them to fold back and you can pull it up into a bun or a ponytail. So if you are going to have a stylist do this for you or a friend, make sure you tell them how you like to wear your hair so they can make sure that they don't put them all in. It looks gorgeous down and then you go, uh-oh, and then you have a bunch of hair extensions in your hair that are showing because that's definitely not the look that you're going for. Should we open up one? Uh, uh, let's open these up a little more. So I have designated because I do know how to apply these. I have done it before many times. I'm gonna to attempt to put these in on myself, but I am going to have my sister help me because I feel like she should be able to help me just fine. And especially since she will let me tell her what to do. <laughs> so we are gonna to attempt to do these together, but it will probably be a few days before we can get together and do that. So in the meantime, I'll just look at these lovingly, like oh, I can't wait to put these in. But let me show you. So this is what one weft looks like. And so then when you peel that part off, you would get another weft. And this is where you could make a sandwich. So just like that. So you put that in, in your hair. See how nice that's gonna blend? And then it just falls down. Your natural hair falls down over it. And it'll look really great. You could even get um, single-sided tape where you could just use one strand and then you just put a like it's like a little end tape almost that just seals it and you don't have to use two pieces and that's really good to do if you've got thinner hair especially in the top parts where you don't want it to be super heavy in a chunk but yeah i don't know if i mentioned this earlier but when you're applying them you don't want to put them like all in a row like this you want to stagger them so if you're going like this kind of like a bricklay do 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 that's the way I would recommend it. But just make sure when you install them that you do not apply them too close to the scalp. If you do that, it's gonna pull more on the hair. You want the extension to be able to move freely back and forth. And also if it's too tight, it'll actually stick out like this. And um, yeah, we definitely don't want that happening. So just make sure that you're being careful, leaving out the perimeters around the hair, making sure you're having them angled so they're gonna lay close to the head very natural position. I mean, think about it. My hair kind of grows down like this. It kind of makes sense that the hair extensions would kind of go like this to go along with it instead of me going like this. If that makes sense. Think about the shape of your head and make sure it accentuates that. Okay. All right. Today is installation day. So 
I have colored my hair. I've touched it up so it's like touched up but still a little bit rooty so it matches my extensions. So you can see here, such a perfect match. I am so super excited. And also I saw a really cool method that I think I'm going to try. And so what, what you do is like in the back when I pull it up, I definitely want this dark root so that it blends when my hair's pulled up. But I love the dimension that this piano color gives. So here's what you do. Put this on the bottom, then you put this on the top, make a little sandwich, and then like you can kind of hide that dimension in there, but it will just like peek out. And then like when you color your hair, it'll pop out, but it won't be as apparent. And you can like switch them up so that it's just super blended. That way you don't have like a row of like blonde, then a row of another color. You can totally customize it that way because I wouldn't want this really blonde part to be where the back of my neck is. As you guys can see, I got dark roots back here. So I wanna make sure that even though I'm gonna leave this bit of hair out here, that that dark root will just blend right in. When I pull that up, it will look really nice. So super excited. I'm gonna be going over to my sister's house. I'm gonna bring my camera with me so we might do a little vloggy action. I might show you how it's going and then I will come back when they're all in and show you guys the final result. I'm so excited, can you tell? <laughs> but before I go, I wanted to show you guys really quickly how my hair extensions came. So first of all, it came in this little box, six star hair, and then all three bundles were inside like this. Came all wrapped. And then they also had a lot of other little extras in the box. Well, not a lot, two things. But these are super nice and high quality because they totally could have skimped and just given you like a crappy like little rat tail comb from Sally's or not even at all. But this is a really nice carbon comb from Tony and Guy. This is so nice. Like I am stoked on this. Like this is super high quality. I mean, hello, professional hairdresser. I know good comb when I see it. This is like, like these are like unbreakable. Okay, these things are so good. Super excited. And also the Tony and Guy clip. I actually use this to color my hair because it has this clip and then watch this. It has a second, I don't know why I haven't had these my whole life, a second clip. So you know when you've got your hair clipped up and they're like, oh, I just have another little piece and you try to put it in and then the whole thing falls down. Solved. So magical. All right, so I'm gonna go over to my sisters now and we're gonna get started putting them in. All right, here's the process we've got. The length coming in, it looks really good. You can see the blend coming and we're making good time. All right guys, so I had to go home and finish the front, but here is a sneak peek of how the back is looking so far. You can see how seamless it looks, how thick the ends are. Like honestly, no one would be able to tell that these are extensions unless they like knew what they were looking for. So super excited and I'll finish these when I get home. All right guys, so I wanted to show you guys my hair. So this has been day two, so I have not washed it yet. I'm not gonna wash it for a few more days so I can make sure all the bonds stay in really good. And it is so pretty. I'm just trying to get my camera in a spot where I don't cover it all. But yeah, it is so beautiful. So I'm gonna turn around and I'll show you guys the back. All right, so this is what the back of my hair looks like. I am obsessed with it. It is so pretty. It is such a thick ponytail. And so like with the way I put them in, you can pull it up and my dark hair covers. So such a cute little pony. And then of course I could just make sure that everything is like covered and where it needs to be. That's the nice thing about having the dark. And I don't have any extensions like in this hair at all. So this hair is all just my natural hair. And then you can see under here is where little sandwiches are. So I'll show you quickly what I did on the side. So right here, there's no extensions like in this part at all. There's no extensions here. There's no extensions here because this hair is all just like free flowing. But I do have, I've got a whole one right here. I just cut these in half so that when I'm pulling my hair up, they have a little bit more movement. So I'm gonna throw it in a ponytail really quick so I can show you guys what that looks like. All right, so you guys can see, 
I can wear my hair up in a ponytail. I don't have giant tracks everywhere. I can wear it up on the side. I could probably pull it up higher if I wanted to. Um, the hair is just heavy, so it will sink down, but I'd probably just have to like clip it up. But like, seriously, like, is that not the most bomb ponytail you've ever seen in your life? I just can't get over the fact of how freaking adorable this looks. Don't mind my face over here, like blurry. But this is so freaking cute. Like I am shook. Like look at that ponytail. I'm just, I love it. The match is so good. The blend is so good. Guys, I could not be more happy with my extensions. Like they are so beautiful. And the best part was, is I slept amazing. If you've ever had beaded extensions, it's a freaking nightmare to sleep on those. It hurts. My hair lies so flat to my head. Like there's no little bumps. There's no like things poking out. Like it lays super flat. Like if someone was touching your hair, they wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with it? Why is it bumpy? It's just so smooth and it looks so good. <gasps> All right, well, I will check back with you and let you guys know how it goes in um, about a week once I have washed it and styled it a few times, get a little bit more of a hang of it. But so far I am loving it and two freaking huge thumbs up. All right, guys, so yesterday I washed my hair, and so I just wanted to give a little bit of feedback now that I've had it for a little while. I've been able to wash it, dry it, see how it feels. So I would say that I definitely need a little bit stronger conditioner because my natural hair is really fine and thin. So I'm going to go today to get a conditioner that is going to be a little heavier because I felt like after I washed it, it was just needing more moisture. Not that there was anything wrong with the hair, just that I didn't have the right conditioner for it. So that's something to consider. If you have a different hair type, if you have really fine hair, you may need to get a heavier conditioner. Now, of course, I'm not gonna put that up at the roots, but just for the ends, but the hair feels really good. One thing I also noticed is with clip-ins, like you'll notice by the end of the day, they're like a tangly mess underneath they get all ratty these hairs did not do that so when it says tangle free like i really have had no issues with tangles when i went to dry my hair when i was like combing my hair it wasn't this big tangly mess the hair has stayed really nice and smooth now like i said it did need a little bit of smoothing because as you guys can see because this is real hair it does have a little texture to it but it's real hair like real hair has texture so i i obviously had to smooth it out and flat iron it but I mean, it looks so freaking good. Like anyone who's seen me has been so impressed by my hair and it blends so incredibly well. I just love it. So here's my hair straightened. It is literally seamless. My hair is so thick and beautiful now. Guys, I can't get over it. So, <laughs> Only good vibes here. I love this hair. I would say these are the best looking feeling extensions that I've ever had. So the proof is in the pudding, y'all. I love my extensions. Thank you so much to Six Star Hair for sending them to me to test and review. And um, yeah, can't wait to keep wearing these and I'm sure you guys will be seeing them in my videos because I'm not taking them out anytime soon. But anyway, thanks guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.